Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, today, uh, we are on our final series of uh, uh, pattern to uh, profit. Uh, this is our final series of uh, pattern strategy case study series, right? Uh, today's topic is uh, about Google, and we want we would like to explore how uh, Google utilizes pattern uh, to sustain its competitive advantage. Uh, okay, sorry. So Jai has uh, briefly introduced uh, me. I'm from Pintas IP Group. I'm a pattern uh, attorney by profession. I have been actively involved in this pattern field for. 20 years and uh, actively involved in the Southeast Asia region, right? So my uh, my specialty is in protection and pattern monetization. So uh, before jumping into uh, Google pattern case study, I would like to share a little bit, you know, about Google, the company itself. Uh, it is uh, one, it, Google is the largest, I think everybody knows, the world largest uh, more and most successful technology media company. And uh, it runs on an attention-based business model. Uh, it was founded in 1997, 1996 by two founders, Larry Page and Sergey Brin. Uh, and it went IPO in year 2004. And uh, as of 2021, it has a revenue of a whooping $282 billion. Uh, as of yesterday, uh, the market cap of Google has exceeded $1.9 trillion, right? Uh, a relatively young company, less than 25 years old, but it, it is able to achieve uh, such a astronomical market valuation of $1.9 trillion. So today we want to explore, right, uh, the secrets of uh, Google success and how Google uses pattern uh, to, to sustain its profit and its competitive advantage. So every time we talk about Google, you know, uh, we are always curious, uh, how does a company, a technology company, managed to grow its way from a startup 25 years ago in 1997 to be the world largest technology company. So uh, Google was founded by two PhD students from Stanford University, uh, uh, the two founders, Larry Page and Sergio Brin. So both of them uh, were, you know, at that time, 1997, uh, Internet were, were at its uh, nascent, very nascent stage. So uh, the two researchers were working on how do we search the internet better and more effectively. So uh, uh, Larry Page has come up with a techniques to do ranking of all the web pages on the internet. So this technology uh, is called eventually called page rank and it is actually a patented technology uh, and we are going to look at the patents later. Uh, while Sergey Brin was actually uh, focusing on data mining, uh, to most, be more specific, Sergey Brin was looking at how do you do associative, how do you link words together in a tuple and, and, and to facilitate the search. So one, uh, two data scientists, PhD candidate came together and they came in to introduce a search engine called Google. So initially, uh, Google housed itself uh, in the uh, Stanford University uh, Office of Technology uh, Licensing Office. They have an incubator in, in Google. So the two came together and, and, and in, start introducing the search engine to the Stanford University community. And very soon, right, uh, uh, it, it, it be, because the search engine was popular, was accurate, was fast, then it became popular and, uh, and uh, they needed money to run this uh, operation. They want to scale up. So they approached Alta Vista. At that time, there were many. Uh, Google is certainly not the first company to do internet search. There were other bigger players like Yahoo, Alta Vista, Excite, and the two founder approached Alta Vista 
for funding. They want to sell the engine for $1 million. It was rejected by Alta Vista. Yeah, and uh, so, uh, and, and they tried to approach many other company without success. So, uh, so what they eventually decided to do was to take leave from their PhD program and came out and formed Google Incorporated and uh, started the company out of a garage. That was in 1997. Okay, sorry. So, uh, and it, because the technology was uh, very effective and uh, they need more funding to grow the business. So they actually uh, went to uh, a few company established players like Yahoo, Excite, but they were, you know, uh, they, they couldn't get, uh, you know, the, the, the valuation that they wanted. In fact, Excite offered them a quarter of a million, 250,000 to buy over the engine. Well, what they wanted at that time was 1 million US dollar. They couldn't get it. Yahoo even didn't even want to talk to them. So uh, they decided to take a leap of faith and they uh, decided, you know, to form a company uh, and uh, they were able to convince a few angel investors to pump in $1 million to kickstart the company. Among the very, very early stage uh, companies were Andrew Bestoham, which was the founder of Sun Microsystem, and also Jeff Bezos, the founder of Amazon. They collectively invested $1 million in the A round of the company in 1998. They have a powerful engine and they decided to uh, start uh, to, to spin off the company and they found the angel to put in a million dollar. And after that $1 million was raised, they built up the system and, and then and eventually they run out of fund again. They need more money to scale up because their engine was very popular. So at that time, they were able to approach two VC firms in Silicon Valley, the two famous, uh, the Kirtner Perkins and also Sequoia Capital to raise 25 million US dollar. And for the B round, and for the C round pre-IPO, they managed to raise another 15 million from, among others, Yahoo and also uh, Eric Smith, who eventually become their CEO, and also some celebrity like Arnold Schwarzenegger and also Tiger Woods. And uh, with these three rounds of funding, they managed to go IPO. And this is the financial chronology of Google. The company was founded in 1995 at Stanford University, angel investor put in uh, 100,000 uh, uh, initial seed fund from the uh, 100,000 and angel capital uh, venture angel investor with a million for 2% of the share and the two VCs for 25 million and uh, Yahoo uh, and a few other A round, a C round investor for 15 million and IPO in year 20, 20, 2004 at $2.7 billion. And uh, in 2018, the market cap, the business has grown success uh, tremendously. The market cap was $7.28 billion. And in uh, year 2020, January 2020, the market cap has exceeded a trillion dollar. And if you check Google right now, Alphabet, uh, you know, the name has been changed to Alphabet in 2015, the market cap has exceeded $1.9 trillion. So this is a company that has grown and grown, you know, exponentially over the years. And what do they, what is the seed? What is the, uh, uh, the, uh, the secret recipe of their success, you know? is a very powerful search engine and a very innovative business model, which we are going to explore later. So if you were, you know, I be believe some of you uh, who, are, who are at my age, right? We all remember uh, vividly uh, during that time in the year 2000, you know, there was many search engine and, and, and Google was the most efficient one. And very quickly, Google gained attraction uh, in a lot of user. And if you were, you know, uh, brave enough, right, to put money in Google stocks when it went IPO at $85 uh, dollar per stocks. Today, it will be worth $65,000, uh, uh, right? 
you can see how many times the company has uh, uh, appreciated over time, right? So this is uh, the financial uh, history and chronology of Google. Now we would like to look at the business model of Google. So Google, as we all know, is not the first search engine. On the contrary, it was a late comer. There are many players before Google. You have Yahoo, Excite, Alta Vista, and all that. But uh, what Google has done is they come up with an incredible search engine, yeah, a more accurate search engine incorporating the technology from the two founder, the page rank, and also, you know, the Sergey Brin um, data mining techniques, which have been patented, and we will look at them. They also have a very powerful business model, right? It's technology plus business model. The two combined together, becoming a very powerful weapon, right? So because of the search engine, the powerful search engine, you attract a lot of people using your search engine to search for document in the internet, right? So with so much people coming, there are two options open to Google. Google can charge the internet user for using the search engine, or they can use other way to make money. So in this sense, they found another way to make money. They, they were the first company to realize that data is the currency of the you know, of the internet age. Those who control data, you can make a lot of money out of data. So they do an indirect business model. They don't charge the consumer directly. They take the data and sell it to advertisers. So if people want to bid, right, certain keywords, certain hot keywords, you pay to bid to get yourself ranked on top and, and you, get, you pay money to, to Google for ranking on the website. And not only that, in order to attract more attractive content, Google come up with another uh, package for AdSense. The AdWords is for advertising, for bidding, for, you know, for targeted advertising to advertiser. And for the content provider, the video provider, they come up with AdSense. So people start creating good content. And if people, more than people, a lot of people access the content, they will get paid for contributing to the content. That, that's the AdSense. And in this business model, everybody benefits, right? Uh, the user can search quality content faster, better. The advertiser can uh, advertise to targeted audience who search this type of topic and the, the cre content creator can make money. So this is uh, the business model. Unfortunately, business model is something you have not patent, right? So what, have, uh, what Google has done is they patented the technology that drives the search and which we, we are going to look at today. So this AdWords and AdSense in combination make Google the most powerful technology company in the world. And this innovative business model is backed by a very strong search engine. And you know you can use a search engine to access any very, very uh, any document in the internet in the faster and most accurate way compared to other competitors. So in 2002, Google generated $224 billion, which is 80% of Alphabet total revenue from advertisement. So it is, you know, it takes away all advertisement from all the traditional media because you by using Google, you can target to the to you can target to the right people, right? You are not blasting your content to everyone, but only people who want to search for your services, you can target them. And 80% is from advertising and this advertising is derived from a very powerful search engine and also for the for the very innovative. And the rest of the business like YouTube uh, Premium and also Google Cloud also contributing another 20% of the revenue. So Google is until today a very heavily uh, a search engine uh, 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 ad-based uh, company. So if you look at the statistics, right? Well, Google is the largest uh, digital advertising company. Uh, and in, 20, in 2022, $240 billion was uh, of the Google's money is made from advertising, digital advertising, and uh, followed by uh, uh, Facebook. Facebook is also using data, right? To generate uh, advertisement. Uh, these two company dominated the ads world and it's using data. You provide free service in return, you use the data of the user to sell to the advertiser and advertiser 
pay Google or Facebook for uh, getting the leads. Yeah? So this is how Google makes money. So uh, looking at the uh, business strategy of Google, right? Uh, you know, if you have followed my previous webinar, uh, then you will know that I always refer to this framework, the generic Porter's generic framework to, to analyze the company. And according to this Google uh, generic uh, strategy portal, for a company to be sustain sustainable, to be effective, right? To have a competitive advantage, you have an option to either choose to be a differentiator and target a certain customer, or you want to be a cost leader, either or. You cannot be stuck in the middle. You cannot be cheap and different. You cannot be stuck in the middle doing everything to everyone. You either cost leadership or differentiator, right? So in, in this particular case, uh, Google is uh, very clearly a cost differentiator, a cost uh, leadership, leader, cost leader. Because effectively, uh, Google offer services free of charge to all the users. There's no barrier. You don't have to think, you know, to use Google. And their services are good, right? They have good search fast and uh, very accurate search uh, engine, which is provided to you for free, High, exceptional quality, so very easy. And Google doesn't offer only one service. Google offer a host of services. You can use a search for free. You can do Gmail for free. You can send email for free. You can check your location using Google Map for free. You can uh, watch videos on YouTube for free. You can drive using Waze for free. All these are free, but they collect a lot of data and sell to the advertiser and make money from the advertiser. But on top of that, Google also differentiate its service, right? Because the, the, the search engine is very competitive, so very competitive, many competitors. So, so your search has to be better and better. So Google keep differentiating by improving the search engine and all these improvements are being patented. Okay, so let me just move quickly uh, on this economic mode. I think all businesses has to have an economic mode, right? Warren Buffett will only invest in company with strong economic mode. For Google, the strong economic mode is a very strong search engine, right? The search engine is protected by patent, by copyright, but mainly by patent because the flow is protected by patent so that no other search engine can use the same techniques of flow to offer the search service uh, the, the search uh, result and uh, and and today this is the purpose of our set webinar today to explore the key patterns underlying the search engine and also the some of the latest technology by Google and uh, I think it is good that we do a bit of introduction to IP for those of you who are new to IP. Maybe some short introduction will be helpful. Uh, you know, when we talk about uh, IP, we look at patterns that protects technology, new innovation, copyrights that protects the content, trademarks that protects the brand, industrial designs to protect the exterior outlook or the look and feel, the GUI and also the trade secrets that protect the valuable information that is keep secret within your company. All these IPs are intangible asset. You cannot see or touch a patent, but its value come from the legal monopoly that patents brings to the table. If you have an idea, you have a technique that you patent, then for that country where you found a patent, no one can use the technique, the combination of steps, or the combination of features in your product or services. And all IPs are limited by time. You don't own a patent forever, it lasts for 20 years, right? So all these, uh, all these are the different characteristics of patents. And I would like to very quickly go to the the this uh to to the purpose of IP is actually for you to own your idea. And as you all know, idea is the main engine of growth. Right. To, to win, to stand out, you need to do things differently. And if your idea has to do with innovation, you need a patent. If your idea is on the original expression, copyright. If your idea is identification, trademark. If your idea is the look, then the industrial design. So what? why do we need uh, uh, IP? Uh, we need IP for basically two reasons. For all businesses, right? First, barrier to entry. If Google come up with a better search engine than other players like Yahoo, like Alta Vista, 
you need to create a barrier of entry. If you don't have barrier entry, you open it up to the market. If you don't have pattern, other player can copy your way of doing searching, your way of doing ranking, right? So barrier of entry is the key reason why you need a pattern to keep competitors at bay and also to secure freedom to operate. Afterwards, you will see when Google try to go into new areas like operating a system for mobile phone, uh, then it has no bear, it has no freedom to operate because that fear has already been nominated by a big other big players like Apple and Microsoft. So they have to buy patent in order to enter a new market. That's called the freedom to operate. So so it's one is the offensive, one is the defensive reason why you need the patent. So today in this webinar, we talk, we look at both case studies of how pattern Google uses pattern to erect barrier of entry and also to secure freedom to operate. Yeah, uh, by buying patents, patents from others. So talking about IP, IP is a very important asset for companies. And take Google as, as an example, according to Interbrand in year 2021, it is worth 196, uh, 196 billion dollar. Yeah, Google, the fourth uh, valuable brand. It is a brand alone, the word itself is worth uh, close to 200 billion dollar. If you take the trillion dollar valuation of Google, then the brand is worth 20% of the company's value. So this, from, from this you know, uh, example, we see the importance of IP and you have other, Google has more other importance IP, like the patents, which we're going to talk about today. So uh, what is patentable? Uh, to be patentable, uh, you have to have a technological solution, which is novel, which is inventive and useful. Novel meaning you have a combination which is new. No one has used a combination. And this combination de deliver a better result and something that you can implement useful. If you can meet these three criteria, you have a patentable proposition. And, and if you look at all these patterns, uh, famous patterns that I show here, you know, all patterns can be uh, uh, categorized as uh, article, pattern, machine, process, and composition pattern, these four areas. So uh, all this deals with combination. Post-it tech, for example, the 3M post-it tech is a combination between paper and glue. And because this combination was new and was uh, deliver a good result, then it was patented, uh, you know, when it was launched. And you have the machine patterns like uh, photocopying machine, you combine, you know, the, the camera with roller, with engine, uh, with motor, all these combination put together to create the, photocopying effect, then this combination can be patented. If you meet the three criteria I mentioned, process patent, the tetra pack, when you pack milk in a vacuum, and, and, and this combination, you can patent all the composition, the, the ingredient combination. So patterns, we are dealing with combination. Afterwards, we are going to look at Google and how Google patent the combination of steps that do searching, that makes searching more effective and better. Okay, so, and, and, and big companies like, Google or any companies, you want to protect a billion dollar market or you want to protect a, 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 a big market, you need to have a portfolio of patterns. So one pattern is not sufficient to, to corner a market. So afterwards you can see, you know, pattern, when, when Google found pattern, they found in a portfolio to have a stronger uh, market power. Okay, so uh, pattern portfolio, uh, Google has uh, 100 over 1,000 patterns belonging to 38,000 unique families, right? And uh, if you look at the filing trend, uh, Google pattern filing has been on the rise over the years. It, the valuation increases, so is the pattern filing uh, portfolio, uh, pattern filing numbers. Uh, it has increased tremendously and uh, Google is betting on a lot of future technology filing pattern in different, different areas to own the future, right? Because they are strong in search engine, but they have to keep battings on the future technology. Then they found a lot of patterns on the future found patterns in multiple areas like AI, cybersecurity, hardware, cloud, mobile, uh, autonomous vehicles, AR, VR, all these areas compared to others, big players. Yeah, but if you, if you want to follow the other companies, we have a series of pattern strategy by all this company on our website. You can visit, you can listen to all their patterns, uh, which our team has compiled and you know present to you through this webinar. 
And if you look at the, the areas that they found the most pattern, uh, you know, all the technologies are ranked using certain uh, pattern classification system. And the classification GO616, uh, 6F is actually on the search technology is the area where they found the most pattern, right? So, so we can see that the majority of the pattern by Google are found in the search uh, area. And a, a pattern is jurisdictional. So when you found, you have to file in country that you want to own in technology and pattern found the most patterns in the States followed by US and Europe. Okay, now uh, I will enter into the gist of today's uh, webinar, which is the search engine, you know, exploring uh, Google's search engine and the pattern underlying the search engine. So uh, I think if you look at Google's mission, uh, its mission is to organize the world's information and make it universally as accessible, right? So this vision, in order to achieve the vision, you have to keep innovating on the search technology, depending on how the web is moving. So from the text search, uh, Google is moving into the voice search for its voice devices like Google Home. I have Google Home at home, right? So it's very easy for you to ask Google Home to find songs for you. You just give a verbal command and the songs will be played on the device. Or visual search, you can use visual to search using their search engine and lately machine learning. Uh, in May 2023, uh, Google launched a search generative experience using the large language model to generate and to create summary of search result. And today we are also going to look at the patterns under this search generative experience later. Yeah. Okay, so the search algorithm and the flow in the search algorithm enable search result to be delivered faster and in the most comprehensive ways to the all the internet user. And because of the effective search engine, it generates so much visitors and it able to create the skill advantage. Uh, Google has got a skill advantage. The technology that they, they develop can be used by so many people concurrently. So this, all this uh, algorithm, all this flow behind the search algorithm, they are protected by patents. So this creates the biggest more economic more for Google, right? If other players want to copy, they have this barrier from uh, Google. So Google con uh, control 90% of the world search engine market, right? 90% of the search done on the internet today are using Google search engine. It has the most innovative search and using the Google AdSense and AdWords, it was able to generate a lot of ad monies from companies who want to, you know, to reach out to all these users. So uh, it listed on the slides are the patterns uh, which underlies that Google search engine. And many of these uh, are the very early patterns, right? We, we want to show from the first day of Google how it, it, it creates, uh, it, it protects the technology. We have prepared a handbook for you, which you can download, right? Using this, uh, uh, and, and you can read those patterns in detail. And today, uh, because we, we can't have the webinar for too long, so we're just going to introduce to you some of the patterns that we have. So in a, in a search, right, what we usually do is, you know, you send a queries to the engine, the engine will go to the index, like the backs of your books, you have index. So through the index, you will take out all the relevant document, you know, the match, you have the hypertext matching, the techniques to match your queries with the, the words in the index. And after that, you take out the document, then the document will be ranked according to its relevance, before it is presented to you in a fast and accurate way. So this is how the search engine works. And a lot of uh, early patterns of Google are found in this area of hypertext matching and also ranking, these two technology. So let, let's look at these two areas. Uh, of course, Google has 100 over 1,000 patterns. So we, we just take some of the key patterns to share with you and it's all in the handbook. Okay, so this is the very first pattern for Google was owned by Stanford University when Laura, uh, Larry Page was a PhD student. The pattern was found by Stanford University way back in 1998, right? This was the first pattern of Google. And this pattern talked about ranking documents, all the internet document based on the number of links each document has, the back link and the front link, you know, 
calculate all the link that each document has and do a ranking. So, so this is the how the ranking was done, right? To, to be presented, it has to be ranked. This pattern was found by Stanford University and was licensed to Google when Google was founded. And Stanford University received 1.8 million shares of Google in exchange for that licensing. And when Google was paid, was when IPO in 2004, Stanford University quickly sell all the share, 1.8 million share for, for $336 million. Okay. And, and Stanford University was very happy, right? I make my money, I, I sold everything. But if they were to keep the share until today, it will be 100 times more. Yeah, the 360, 36 million will become 33 billion US dollar if they have kept the share today because Google has grown, as you have seen just now. And, and this is the licensing agreement signed with the Stanford University uh, to license the patent. Okay, so what it does is uh, this Google uh, is the first time, you know, you do ranking based on uh, how many links that a document has, right? So this is like referring to, you know, if there's a link, that means there are reference. So this is the example of the page rank technology. So let's say, you know, you have five websites in the world and they are linked together. So you calculate, you assign uh, a, 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 a score to each link and 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 you add up all the, the link and the document will be ranked according to the number of back link and front link that you have. And this will be uh, calculated to, to rank the importance of the document. So this is the first ranking document and the page rank, the most basic. And the reason why this ranking technology cannot be used by other patterns, uh, uh, companies, uh, search company is because of this pattern. And they further refine the search, uh, the, the, the effectiveness, re-ranking using referencing. And this is the pattern found in 2021. On top of the link to do ranking, they also depends on the interconnectivity of the document. So meaning if this document make reference to another document, it's not a link but reference, so if there's a reference, then they are have assigned a higher ranking compared to documents with no ranking, uh, no, no referencing. So this internal interconnectivity was also considered uh, in doing the ranking and the re-ranking of the importance of the pages. So if you are interested to know more, so you can read the, 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 the claims. Yeah, this is a combination of steps, right? And this combination of steps that perform the ranking is owned by Google because it's claimed and patented by Google, right? So you can read yeah, in details, uh, which uh, I don't have time today. Uh, I just want to introduce to you some of these key patterns. And if you need more uh, queries, you can always ask with us. And the other uh, te technique is about hypertext matching, how you can match uh, a, a, word, a wording uh, to, to, you know, to, do, to, to check, uh, to track the, the document. Uh, so, so among the uh, uh, important uh, key uh, ranking, uh, uh, the hypertext uh, pattern is the one found by Sergey uh, Brin, the, the other founder uh, of uh, Google, uh, which was found in nine March. So, as you know, uh, 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 as I mentioned just now, Sergey Brin is actually a data mining scientist. So. Uh, he discovered that, okay, uh, if I want to uh, store the document in my index, I better find a string of information or a tuple of information to store them rather than individual words. Because when you do search, you will probably type in a few keywords, right? So these this keywords, if they are, they happens that there is a pattern for them to coexist, they should be stored together on the in the index. So that when you search, you can retrieve the document more faster and also more accurately. So these associative uh, uh, words are all uh, tracked and all kept in the index together. And this is actually the pattern uh, found by Sergey Brin. And this was an early pattern in March 20, uh, uh, 2000. And then uh, another pattern that I would like to share with you is that of uh, method to determine equivalent description for an information need, a pattern found in 22, 2002, February the 1st. 
Like when you, you want to search a certain document, different people will search using different words to search. So this pattern will come up with a way they, they, they determine uh, the equivalent way to describe an information need, right? So, so if uh, they, then all these equivalent way are packed together. So if, if we search uh, a certain, in a certain way and it falls within the equivalent description and the search uh, engine will call the same document. So this is actually patented by this pattern, early pattern. Uh, all this equivalent way of describing your search uh, requirement, they are all grouped together. And, and if the score is above a certain threshold, then all this document will be recalled by this uh, search. So this process again has been claimed and patented. Next is about uh, using a modified index uh, to respond to an ambiguous search queries. Like, so, so what this uh, uh, search, uh, what, what this uh, techniques uh, uh, claim is actually, uh, yeah, uh, using an ambi amb ambiguated index. Like for example, in the previous uh, generation of Poon, you have key Poon and you have to press the key button to actually come up with an alphabet, right? So if you were to press, if you want to press, uh, using the key one two three key to do the alphabet, you need to have another index to convert. You know your 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 input into uh in, in into a language that the search engine can understand. So this is what this pattern is about, right? You have a a, a first index and you have a mapping information to convert to a second index, and the second index will be something that the search engine can understand and generate you the search. So this is one way where uh, the user can input uh, you know, something to the search engine, even though they are not using uh, the normal keyboard by using other keyboard, the, the, the index, the, the mapping information can put it into uh, a language that the search engine can understand. So this, this pattern cover that situation. And the other one is about Joe uh, coding uh, techniques used by Google search. I think when you search right using Google, uh, the, the, the document that comes to you mostly will be localized web document because if you reside in a certain geographical area, you want certain document with geographical significance, you want to retrieve document with certain geographical significance. When you search about you know what you want to eat in your locality, you don't want uh, all the other to come out. You want in your locality to come out. So using these techniques, you know, you come up, the Google come up with a table and the table would have uh, address field. And when the search, when the web document has this address term, it will be put into the right address field and you can have a geographical coordinate assigned to that. Uh, when, when you search from a certain locality, then those documents will be retrieved and presented to you. And that is actually behind this pattern. Right. So, so these are some of the pattern that uh, underlies the search engine uh, in its early days and uh, established Google to be one of the uh, key ninety percent of the search uh, market engine market in the world. You can read about that, and these these are all very uh, technical document. But when they claim those processes, you know the process are very generic set. So. Uh, it covers quite a wide uh, spectrum of activities. Next, I would like to talk about Google's pattern in the recent years. As you know, Chat GPT took the world by storm in year 2021, right? Within two years, two months, within two months, uh, Chat GPT, a popular chat box from OpenAI, managed to attract 100 million active users, making it the fastest growing. Uh, consumer application in the history of mankind. So with, when ChatGPT entered the market with this, uh, uh, the open AI uh, ChatGPT enters the market, uh, it has uh, kind of shaken uh, Google out of its routine uh, work because, you know, it's going to, because Google is such a dominant player in the search and when you have ChatGPT AI, you know, coming in, uh, then the search engine will be under threat right the tradition the, you you have to you have to uh, 
come into AI. So uh, the CEO of Google, Mr. Pichai, immediately declare a code red alert. Everybody have to sit up, take notice, and have to use AI into its the search engine, jump starting the search engine. And by May 2023, Google started another search engine called a search generative experience using LLM, large language model generative AI. And Google found a pattern for that search generative experience and was granted in 2023 in this pattern, uh, US 1176901. Yeah, this is how a, a search uh, a generative experience look like when you type a certain uh, string of words, then uh, Google will use LLM, large language model, to generate and create summary of the search engine. And it will also present the user with links where you can click and to understand more about the topics that you ask. This is the new interface of the Google search engine. And Google quickly found a pattern in March 2023 using the large language model to do search. And the pattern was granted in the shortest time within six months in 2023. Maybe it is something new, right, to, for a pattern to be granted. I think you can get a pattern granted in six months in Singapore under the fast track, but in US, it's quite rare to see a pattern granted within six months. But uh, this pattern was granted within six months. So if you look at the claims of this pattern, it was very hot from the oven. It was granted only like less than six months ago. And it is about how, right, you can uh, use LLM to generate search results and also to do summary. So you have got a, 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 you're selecting, you know, when you do search, you will create, you will create the search result and the search result will also come with query responsive search result document. Query responsive search results are the link, right? And the LLM will be uh, used to generate the output and you have a natural language summary. And, and you also have a confidence measure presented at the search page. And this will be what you will see under the generative uh, experience pattern, which was actually granted to Google. And this is how uh, LLM, large language model, enters the scene to assist in doing searches using AI and generative. And in fact, uh, Google is also the leader uh, in the uh, uh, transformer technology, which is also used in the chat GPT large language model chat box. If you dissect the word GPT, the T in the chat GPT actually is the word transformer. This transformer architecture, uh, which uses the self-attention method, right? was actually invented and patented by Google. So even though AI, uh, open AI was able to steal a match over Google in introducing the ChatGPT, but the technology, the core technology of ChatGPT is actually invented and patented by Google, right? So, so for probably when this uh, battle of generative AI heats up and continue to to, 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 to become more and more popular, uh, the patterns owned by uh, Google is going to be something, it's a bargaining chip that Google can use against the other competitors. So this is the, uh, uh, the transformer uh, architecture patent bought by Google. It was bought in 2018. Uh, and underlying this, this technology is, you know, uh, basically it is like, you tell the computer to, to use, to pay attention, right? When whatever input you receive, you have to pay attention to the queries, to the key, to the value, you know, pay attention and ignore the rest to generate a response to that queries, right? Uh, you have to insert an, a self-attention sub-layer to your network. Right, you have the encoder network and the decoder network, and you put in a sublayer of self-attention sublayer. So this is uh, very technical. I think the tech, the 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 scientists, data scientists, will be able to appreciate this. 
but it's basically a way where, you know, uh, if the AI pay attention to the queries, the key and the value, and, and they can generate an answer, you know, to the queries that comes in. And this is actually the claims that underlies that uh, chat GPT, which is invented and patented by Google. So uh, today, uh, Google is an integrated uh, business empire, vertically integrated. It owns many companies that is part of our day-to-day -day life. Because we, uses, we use a lot of uh, uh, Google's product without knowing it, like YouTube, uh, like, for example, Android, uh, like, for example, uh, uh, Waze. All these are Google's uh, product. Right, so Google still make more than eighty percent of its revenue from Google search and added ad advertisement, but it has to advert, it has to bet, it has to keep betting on new area of technology, hoping that another one of this technology will become the next search engine that makes billions and billions of dollars for Google. Right, so. So, so, but when Google wants to enter into new field like Androids, for example, yeah, so it has to solve another problem, which is freedom to operate because the, the, the mobile operating system world has got many incumbents, many other players that have found many, many patterns over the years, right? So in order to enter, you need to uh, not only buy over a company, you need to secure freedom to operate by buying over the pattern. So I would like to share uh, one case study. Uh, this is the final case study on Android. Uh, Android was actually founded by a group of uh, entrepreneurs in, in Polar Ato uh, to create a, a, a smart device uh, that can, uh, a, a, a mobile device that can is smart and knows the location and the preference of the user. So this company was acquired by Google technology uh, and, and Google uses use this uh, Android not to create another mobile phone, but to, to come up with an operating system, right? This is another uh, 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 strategic move by Google. Google knows that there are so many smartphone players on in the market already, but everyone uses their own proprietary uh, operating system. So why not I come up with a platform that can be used across the board by different phone companies. So they come up with Androids. And Eric Smith uh, used to, to, you know, was the CEO uh, of uh, 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 Google who used to sit on board on the board of Apple, right? So when, when Eric Smith as the CEO of Google came up with Android, uh, it really, uh, make uh, Steve Jobs very angry yeah, because Apple was the first one to come up with this operating system and, uh, and, and, and uh, Eric came up with the same thing. But Android actually uh, was very successful. It became also the most successful uh, OS mobile OS company taking over 70% of the share. So, so what happened is, uh, you know, Apple took notice and Apple actually take actions against uh, uh, take take action against uh, Google for the Android uh, operating system. So what Apple did was Apple came up with a few other players. Each of them has their own own operating system, their own operating system. Uh, Apple didn't took action on its own. They gang up all the smartphone companies with their own operating system, bought over 6,000 patents from Notel, another telco. 6,000 patents covers a lot of technology on wireless communication, networking, voice over internet, semicon and others. So these are the core, some of the core processes used in the mobile operating system. And for 4.5 billion US dollar, and, and then they gang up, they form a consortium called Rockstar and start to sue Google for the operating system, for the Android operating system. So at that time, Google was still, Android was still young. It doesn't have any patent. So it has to uh, find a way to fight this 
pattern battle, right? This this whole uh battlefield is a pattern battlefield. The 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 established players they see a newcomer coming in, they gang together, they buy patterns, and they took action against Android. And Android at that time was used by a, a host of companies, including Samsung, uh, HTC, Huawei, uh, Jet DE. So how does Google fight this war, right? So what Google has to do is Google has to buy patents from other more established players like Motorola. So they spend $12.5 billion cash, buy over the patent and counter and defended the battle. And eventually the case was settled. So the, the reason why I'm showing this is to show that, right? If you want to move into a new peer, you know, you need to have freedom to operate. And if you are dealing with an area where there are many dominant players, then, you know, freedom to operate will be an issue unless you have that financial muscle like, uh, like you know, uh, Google to buy patterns to fight the war. Otherwise, you'll have to settle the case and, you know, give out the market share uh, back to the incumbent. So, uh, so as you can see, Google is using pattern acquisition uh, as one of the way to acquire, uh, to bolster its market position. And this is the uh, timeline of uh, Google uh, over the years, right? They start filing pattern. They also buy patterns from other established player when they want to enter a new market. Yeah.